Welcome, guys. This is our next installment. We, uh, Gavin and I, again, yeah, we're joined today by 1995 World Cup winner and the guy that you know, know from the screens of Supersport and other places, Corbis Visa. Welcome, Corbis. Thank you. Uh, thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Uh, cool. Yeah. Can you, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, the, what, the one thing that, that fascinates me is that, um, and I want, that's why I want to ask with the, ask, start with the first question, is because... Like if your life, um, am I right in saying that if your life had, had gone a little bit differently, I mean, we might have been asking you today, like what you thought, whether you, whether William Shakespeare should still be on the English cur curriculum at, at, at schools. But am I right in saying that you studied English um, at one stage of your, of your life to be an English teacher? Uh, studied to be a teacher, not specifically an English teacher, that was one of my subjects, but my main subjects were, were uh, uh, psychology, history, and geography. Uh, but I was in a, I was in a, a, an English uh, um, uh, secondary, a primary school in a, a town called the Runnymond on the Diamond Mines. So most of my friends at that stage were expats, you know, from Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and so forth. So I was, as they, as they say, um, forced fed with the English language from a young age. Okay. Do you have, do you have, did you have, have you had an interest in English literature? Um, funny enough, uh, and, and some people won't, uh, it won't ring a bell with some people. I think mostly the, the people from the UK, uh, the stuff that I read because of these friends I had were uh, uh, comic books like Roy of the Rovers and Beano and these kind of things. I, I, I just fell in love with it. I, it was uncommon for an Afrikaans speaking uh, guy to read those stuff. But some of my expat mates have like, tons of these comics which I started reading, you know, which I, I suppose helped in the end. And, and I think I've always had also a, 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 a sort of a love for languages. I, I was always very keen to learn new languages and ways to communicate. And I think also because I like people, you know, and, and you can only get to know people if you can communicate. Okay. You mentioned, you mentioned Aranya Munt. Where did you, where did you go to, to high school? Huh? And when did you leave Aranya Munt? You came to the, the Western Cape in the end, didn't you? Well, well born, born in, in Paul. My folks are, are, are people from the Borland. They both grew up on farms. My mum near uh, Caledon and my dad near Pakitburg. And they, they, they met. And uh, I was born in Paul. And when I was about uh, three years old, we moved to Namibia. To, first to a town called Luderitz, which is a beautiful old German town on the coast. Um, and we, um, as they say, where heat is born in hot as hell, so wind is born in literates. I mean, it blows the pants off anybody, uh, 20, 25 out of the 24 hours a day, but, but beautiful in the heart of the Namib Desert. Uh, and I grew up in the desert and then moved to a running late, later after that. And in secondary school, I was very fortunate to be part of a big tradition in Paul. Uh, in the, I went to Paul Gym, and you all know that the rivalry between Paul Gym and Paul Boys is, is probably 130 odd years old. Yeah, was it? Uh, did you? Either, was it important for you, from your rugby perspective, to go to a rugby school? Because that is very. What you you call it a traditional rugby, rugby school. Yeah, I don't want to sound uh, corny in a way, but yes, rugby has always been a great love. But so did I like like cricket, athletics. I, I suppose I was always born to be a team player, whatever team sport that might be. I like team environments. I've got nothing against individual sports, as my twin brother Bruce Fordyce always says. You know, uh, I, I'm very lucky that he never played rugby. Yet. And I said, to him, well, he's very lucky I never did marathons. But, but I, you know, although, 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 I think, although I think you need different kinds of discipline in, in sports where you're individual or, or team environment. I love the team environment. I love maybe the, the factor that uh, I believe team sports is sometimes more difficult than individual sports because even if you give 100% and you do everything right, it can still be not enough because 14 other oaks or 10 other oaks or, or, or girls, um, in a way, uh, make, might make a mistake or yourself, which will influence the bigger team where a golfer can only blame himself or a tennis player or, or an athlete. Um, and I think that's very interesting. But, but team sports, I love team sports. I think uh, it builds a, a hell of a lot of character in people. If I, if I remember right, you, you, you played junior rugby, first for Boylant and then Western Transvaal, before moving to Transvaal. Maybe chat a bit about that. I mean, uh, I don't think a lot of people know that you played for Boylant. Um, obviously, uh, like any at that state or any today still, you know, every guy playing rugby would like to play, obviously, for his first team at school and then play for the province and play Um Although I, I, I played for the Northwestern Cape uh, under 13 Cranwick side at Cranwick, I never made the Cranwick side at high school. 
uh, which obviously a big disappointment. Um, and then I started studying uh, for, uh, in Paul, and uh, Paul falls under the Boland, as you guys know. Uh, and then that very next year, I made my debut for the Boland team uh, as a 19-year-old, which I was very chuffed because obviously I had a, a point to prove, you know. Um, uh, and I was a youngster, I'm snot-nosed youngster uh, at that stage. I never played under 19, under 20 or under 21 rugby because in the Boland, there were no such leagues. So you go out of school, you walk into the senior side and you play against the real harder barda. I mean, these oaks, uh, the fishermen from Friedenberg and the, and the farmers in the Boland, these are tough oaks. I mean, they, they work on the farm. And for a snot-nosed 19-year-old kid to play, especially in, in the tight five in the forwards, it was hell of a hard. But what a great learning curve and school it was for me. And I, and I played with, with legends in, in Boland rugby, uh, uh, you know, the Hein, uh, uh, the Toys and the um, uh, Bo Skumans, uh, Chris Lumens, the Chris, uh, 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 Richard Visaghi, Nee Lichu, Bertie De Wett, Franz Marais. These were guys, Errol Tobias, they all played, uh, have been playing senior rugby for many years. So... Um, I was very lucky to, to have been able to make that step up, but it was a great learning school for the game of rugby. Was that, a, was that when the Bullock were in the B, the old Curry Cup used to be an A section and a B section? Was it that's a, B a, that's it. Okay. It was a Curry Cup B section, you're right, Gav. Yeah, so they were a stronger team then than they would be now, now for instance. I mean, they were, uh, you know, the B yeah, section. Ab 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I just remember guys like Neil Yuchu, guys like uh, Bo Skuman, yeah. Bertie De Wett. Those were already junior Springboks and uh, already played for bigger provinces like Western Province, Marty's, uh, these things. I mean, uh, Marty's is a great university side now, but you guys will remember in those kind of years and even before those years, you know, a full-on Marty team could have beaten any, like Takis could have beaten any provincial side. It was like full of Springboks. It was amazing. That's why so many people love to go and watch the varsity games. And I'm glad that on that point, uh, interstate, it's, it's sort of coming back to that. It's still drawing crowds now. It's entertaining. And the students, uh, you know, um, get another platform to, to, to show their, their, their skills. And, the, and then you moved to Western Transvaal then. How did that move come about? Was well, I don't know if I'll, if I'll step on a few toes if I tell you the actual truth. So I'll sort of shoot and go a bit, you know, uh, otherwise some people might get in trouble. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, funny enough, uh, a guy that, that has done huge work, not only in academical circles in South, uh, circles in South Africa, called Professor Marty Spalmer. Um, uh, he, at this stage, is in charge. He runs the biggest um, um, uh, after-degree uh, 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 university in the world for teachers, you know, so when somebody wants to sort of do another course or another degree, they would do it through them, which is run via the university at, at Potsdam, and he's the head of that. But anyway, he was, at that stage, was, was the coach of Western Transvaal that came down to play us here in Puerla, and, and uh, I had a, a, a decent game on the day, and, and uh, the next Monday, funny enough, uh, you know, being in the hostel uh, at, at, the, at the college, I mean, uh, and the first years, as you guys know, the guys that does... Uh, telephone duty, so I was lying with my um, mate of mine and my roommate, Carl Spillers, who, who played cricket for SA County Districts and Boland. Mm. Great cricketer, Carl. We're lying in his room and uh, so the first year with the, the, the tiki box uh, telephones in the, in the end of the halls were ringing and, and so they would shout, you know, this uh, Dr. Sparmer, this will be lame. So, I mean, what doctor professor will phone a, a student anyway? It's ridiculous. I shout, yeah, sure, I'm Dr. So-and-so myself. Anyway, so Puts the phone down. Then he phoned back again about three times. Eventually, I thought, no, look, I probably have to just go to the phone. Maybe that's, they're not taking the mickey out of me. So it was this guy called Dr. Marty Spalmer. He says, hi, I'm Marty Spalmer. I'm the coach of Western Transvaal. We played you guys. And then he started ringing a bell that, okay, I saw this guy on the weekend and met him. He said, well, you know, we are the, at that stage, the, the Western Transvaal, the Mili Buddha were the Curry Cup B champions. They had a really good side. Guys like uh, uh, Kiri Barnard, uh, Lawrence Oberosser, Martin Knutzer. Um, Flip van der Merwe, um, these were all playing for them already established. Very personal friend of mine as well, which I met in Porch. But anyway, the only position that he feels he needs uh, uh, to, to more strength and depth is a, a, a lock. Uh, am I interested in coming to Porch? I thought, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, he said, but there's one condition. You have to further your studies. I said, no, 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 I've started studying and that's my, I want to get my degree. Uh, and then, yeah, that's how it happened. So I, I accepted the challenge. And obviously, you know, as doom and gloom people always say to you, no, you're going into the, 
in, from a smaller pond to a bigger pond and this and that and people disappear. But, you know, I've always had an adventurous streak of mine. I've always been a typical tourist and a type five that when people tell you things can't be done, then I, I just try and show them it can be done. Not out of stupidity, but because, you know, I think one should push yourself. One should never say it can't be done if you haven't tried it. And, and that's what rugby is about. That's what sport is about, really, in this and I took the opportunity and I packed my little follow and up I drove to Western Transvaal and had some of the best, unbelievable, um, uh, unbelievable time in my life there for, for, for two years. I had, a, I had an unbelievable uh, stint with Western Transvaal and that's how I ended up there. Okay. And then, and then you, sorry, yeah, go. I was going to ask, did you, did you actually teach, Kurvis? I mean, how long, and, and if you did teach, how long did you that's teach? That's <laughs> That's another funny story, Gav. I mean, uh, I finished up at Hostad, as you know, at the college in Joburg and, and uh, uh, got a, a, a post at the uh, Forum to Um And uh, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, Dr. Lucas Potgitter was a headmaster, a wonderful, incredible educator and headmaster of the school, huge traditions there. And he, uh, he said, uh, we uh, met at some game and he said, uh, uh, I'm looking for a teacher there for next year and what is your subject? And and that was just fitting in nicely. And I said, well, um, apply for it because uh, they're supposed to be there. Um, then I got a phone call from France, you know, and said, uh, we're looking for a, uh, uh, a lock in Carcassonne, the beautiful town of Carcassonne, which is about 100 kilometers south from Toulouse. And that's, a, as you guys both know, and you've been in France, uh, uh, it's a beautiful part of, of, of the country. And it's, uh, it's uh, a, a very historical city. And, and uh, but the only problem is, uh, I phoned Dr. Potgitter and he said, Kurvis, I personally don't have a problem. Uh, it's a great opportunity for you. But the, the education department said, no, you've got to st uh, start uh, with, your, with, your, uh, with uh, teaching and you've got to pay back your bursary. And, and if you guys at, uh, 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 repeat, that's what I'm saying, uh, I'll deny it. But uh, in the amateur years, they offered me a salary in Carcassonne more than four years worth of bursary in six months time. <laughs> so I said, well, so I said, well, you know what? There's these rumors going around about the type five not being uh, intelligent. Well, it's not true. I made the right decision. I said, sorry for the education part, but have a nice day. I can pay back my, my, my bursary. I can go and enjoy it in France, see the world. And um, fortunately or unfortunately, I never looked back after that, uh, you know, because uh, that was uh, me and my teaching uh, even before it started. Okay, and then, and then you, when, when, you, when you first played for, for Transvaal, I was trying to remember when the last time I saw you, and you probably don't want me to remember this, because the one thing that stands out was in 1990, you played a North-South game at Kings Park. And I'm pretty sure that you were involved. There was a big dust-up, and a couple of people were sent off. Am I right that you were one of them? Gav, and I must add to that as well, you're 100% right. Uh, from the start, I was innocent. Okay, <laughs> I remember you standing uh, on the no, side no, of the road. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, 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 uh, tongue in cheek, I'll tell you the truth there. Eh? In fact, there were four people involved. There was myself, F.C. Smith, Ian McDonald, and Audrey Geldnes. And, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, and this is true, Fred Berger, the referee on the day, will, 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 will vouch for this. We were all four in a scuffle, but the wrong two people got sent off, and the ones who threw the punches were left on the field. So it was a bit of chaotic. Uh, situation. I actually laughed. I said to Nas, you know what? Uh, uh, outside of Petura, not a lot of people on the rugby field or supporters loved Nas. They respected him for his brilliance but didn't like him. Uh, I was one of them. <laughs> Nas, I'm just joking. But, uh, but, but on that day, he was the captain of, of the North team against yeah. the South and it was two really good teams. I mean, it was a packed Kings Park. As you remember, it was a great game of rugby. Yeah. Um, and those North South games always are very really popular. It was like yeah. sort of trials in a way but, but really a showpiece. Uh, anyway, Nas went up to Freak Burger and, and, and a typical Nas with a, a fashion said, Freak, the wrong two oaks were sent off. If you don't bring them back, I'll take my team off the field. And Freak was like, for a couple of seconds, he was dumbfounded because that would have been absolute disaster. But I got respect for Nas as the captain, you know, to, to, to yeah. actually to, to show the cojones and, and say that to the referee in, 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 a, in, a, in a quite a nice way. But, but I said, no, 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 boats, don't do that. That'll, be, that'll, be, that'll not be the right thing. So we, we walked off and sat down. And, yeah, I was annoyed because I really, that one time, I was an innocent uh, individual. So, so, okay, so my first memory is, is of that game, but you must have played for Transvaal before that. Did you play under, under well, no, Harry wasn't even there yet. 1990 would have been Papa. I started... 
I started when I moved to Western Transvaal. I'll, I'll, I'll just a quick rundown. Okay, so at, in, in Poch now, um, uh, they also picked, uh, uh, every year, they picked the Karika B side that would play the, the old sport pinar. You guys will remember that as an yeah. exhibition game normally uh, before a test or whatever. So I would pick for the Karika B side that played against the sport pinar. Uh, and then the next week, there was the SA Colleges week. Um, and then I was uh, uh, picked for the SA Colleges team, uh, captain of the SA College team. And then after that, and we played the Roy Boker, the Transvaal B side, uh, also at the, in Jova. And after that, Doc Late approached me and said, look, he's looking for a number two lock. Will I be interested in coming to, to, to Joburg? And I said to him, um, yes, 100%. Uh, but obviously, you know, I need to further my studies and finish my studies. And it's very important to me. Uh, so they were able to, to um, just transfer the bursaries and stuff. And everything was, was cool. And again, the right move, the right, the right time. I was very really blessed, very really fortunate. Um, uh, the... In every town, where I started in Paul, Western Transvaal in Poch and in Joburg, I mean, I had unbelievably uh, great times. I was very blessed. I got made friends for life. I enjoyed my rugby. Um, and and uh, that's how I ended up in, 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 in the Val. You know, I played 138 times for, for the Lions or Transvaal, which, which the guys were very good. Me, the, the Lions and the Val will always have a great soft spot in my heart because uh, Ellis Park has always been kind to me. It's, uh, the people there, the, the, the players I played with, the players I played against, um, I love the stadium, and maybe because I grew up in a desert and we didn't even have, even have grass in our front yard, Ellis Park's grass, the stadium, is the most incredible stadium in the world, in my opinion, as you guys know, especially if it's full, it's unrivaled when it comes to atmosphere. Brenna? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, at Transvaal there, I mean, I, I remember sitting, oh, I had season tickets there as a student, and I was, I used to sit there near Jimmy Abbott there, there, there on the main grandstand, and um, I remember that, that team, that must have been quite interesting, the way that team was built, because Doc Lake built quite a potent team over that 1991, 92, 93, before, before obviously Kitch came in and Harry came in before that. Um, Paul Pelser, as Gavin mentioned as well, and Martin, mm. you are talking about it was with you at Western, there was quite a few Western Transport guys who moved across with you mm. as well. You, you, Gav's right. I mean, when I moved from, from Potch to Joburg, Paul, when Paul Pelser was my first coach. And it was sort of getting, you guys will remember, towards the end of, of also a great era of uh, Paul Pelser with the Yanni Bretts and the Pete Kriers and the Empas Rademeyers and these guys, Charles Peters, uh, great flankers, uh, Yanni Bretts, John Robbies, all these guys who have been playing rugby there. Chris Rogers, uh, you know, I can mention mm. all of them, have been playing really well for, the, for three, four years, getting to a final and just not, you know, and then meeting a guy like Nas Bota that even in Hail and Storm. You know, could, could win a curry cup. Um, so I walked again into that team as a fairly youngster uh, with all these harder bar experienced um, uh, 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 players for the Vars. So it was tough to get in there. And, 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 and funny enough, the only two new guys that came in that next year into the team with all that experience there was me and, and uh, Smalley. Uh, and uh, again, you know, uh, Engelsman, we became friends uh, from the first moment. Uh, um, and and uh, also because we were new in the team, we had to stick together, you know. So when Pa Pelsi, you're right, and then there was changes when Pa, you know, retired. Um, then there was a couple of interesting stints, as, as you guys have mentioned as well. You know, there were Harry Fulhoun, who also did well, but just couldn't win the finals um, for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Uh, uh, and we were there. And, and, and I think then a lot of, lot of coaches say, Kitch takes all the credit. He takes massive credit. But one must also acknowledge that certain coaches like Harry, and those guys started building towards this and, and the core slowly uh, with some players coming in and out and so forth. So, yes, I think there was hard work. Um, I, I played in, in five Curry Cup finals of which we won, we won uh, uh, two. Um, the first three back-to-back -back we lost, you know, one against Northerns and then against uh, Natal. And, uh, and, uh, and then we won two and we won the, and lost the fifth one against Natal again. But... But that's how I got there with a lot of coaches. And, and, and I think every one of them played a part. I think one must give credit to all the coaches that was involved there. Um, before Kitch came from, uh, from Northern Transvaal, from Pretoria, uh, and he pulled a couple of guys in. And I think what he did right, if you ask me in the beginning, is he studied the players. There's one thing about Kitch Christie. He was a great studier of men and the way they think and the way they react. And to put them together, certain personalities, uh, sometimes there was maybe a better player or a, 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 not a great player, not as good a player as another person, but the personality 
was better for the team, for the environment. So that the whole thing was knitted to eventually build up to a World Cup. And that you've got to give uh, the coach uh, a, a, a credit. I mean, he was an incredible man. And you guys knew him well, both of you as well. Um, he was a great study of many. It took time to get to know him because he was, he was a huge introvert. And he studied every player, and, and, uh, and, but in the end, um, every one of us would have walked through fire for him. Kubis, if I remember correctly, in 1992, when we came back, you went in that, you didn't play against the All Blacks, you didn't play against Australia, and you went on that, 1990, that first 1992 tour either. But at the same time as the, as the Boxers were touring in 92, I remember Transvaal went, to, went overseas and they played. Under, did you go on that tour? There was a tour that happened concurrently. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I, I was in the running to play that, that opening game back from isolation at the Ellis Park against the All Blacks and, because I played that previous Saturday at Loftus for the junior box. But unfortunately, in that game, I tore my, my, my uh, ligaments clean off the bone and I was out for eight and a half weeks, um, which was not a great timing. I'm not saying I was going to play, but I, I feel in all indications was there that I was a, a definite candidate to play uh, against, um, uh, basically between me and Artie Gelnes to play in the number four jersey. But unfortunately, you know, that's part of the game of rugby. Um, injuries is part of it. But you're right, then, then end of the year, you know, we did go on that, uh, that Transvaal tour, which was also <laughs> very interesting. Um, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, that's where Kitch and Ray Mort and these guys start building a team. But interesting, and this, to go back to what I said earlier about Kitch, he could have said, um, no, let's rather train at home. But he put together a group of players, took them out of the comfort zone because he didn't know a lot of the players himself. Mm-hmm. Overseas, mud, rain, hostile, mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, uh, hostile uh, crowds in, in the towns of Neath and in the, uh, Newport and so forth. Uh, and, and, and then he, he, he sort of saw, uh, watched and ticked the boxes, which Oaks can, uh, can function out of the mm-hmm. comfort zone and which guys are really the team players. Now afterwards, that, you know, that's exactly what he did looking back at it. And that's why I think he's put together and was such a master at putting together groups of players and coaching staff. If I remember correctly, I mean, you, okay, so most of your, a lot of your top players would have been with the box. I think there were nine Transvaalers on that, on that tour. I think it was the third. Yeah, there were nine Transvaalers and then 10 Northern Transvaalers, if I remember correctly. Uh, you did take a couple of beatings on that tour and it was a, would have been a bit surprising because we thought that South African provincial teams were going to be stronger. But then a couple of months later, you went and you won this. Uh, it was the following year that you won the Super 10. You beat Auckland in the final. So, I mean, it was a very quick sort of learning curve for Klitsch and a very quick learning curve for the team. Exactly. But I think that also showed that, you know, his method of, of putting together teams and squads and, and also the people that he brought into as assistant coaches were, were actually the right people. It was people with credibility as former players, uh, credibility as coaches, uh, and the players accepted and the players accepted um, the, the, the rules and, and regulations. And I remember, you know, in the old days, I can't mention the word, but in the old days when somebody was a was a <laughs> troublemaker, um, yeah. uh, they they used to say, "Ah, oh, that Oak is a shit stirrer." Nowadays, yeah. you know, with the psychological talk, and they say he's very different. Now, Smalley was very different yeah. uh, for obvious reasons. So, uh, but he knew how to handle these guys. I mean, we all know hookers are just born different. I mean, that's a given. All of them. Um, yeah. So that's why they they also say. You know, I mean, as a former rugby player, I told my daughter already. You know, uh, I'm not so much keen on any rugby players dating them because I know all the bosses. I know their way they operate. So I'm not so keen. A choir boy, uh, you know, doctor, professor, no problem. But hookers, shoot the yeah. bastard at the gate because you cannot allow them on your premises or near your daughter. I mean, that's for the record and I know it's true. But uh, I think, I think um, also the, 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 the fact that, 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 that Kitch said to, to, to James, Bushy, I mean, you're a great player. Um, we need your skills. You, you, are, you have Springbok written all over you. But there's only one condition. It will be on the team's terms. If you say yes, it's cool. If you say no, that's also fine. We shake hands. And James, think about this. James played probably some of his best rugby under Kitsch. Um, yeah. Because they had respect for each other. They understood the, the, the rules were laid down from day one. And everybody bought into that. Which is, I think, one of, one of the basic fundamentals of a strong team or a strong uh, a sportsman, a woman, you know, you've got to start there and then build up. And then, um, if I remember correctly, you made your debut alongside, am I right in saying it was under, under Springbok debut alongside uh, Rudy Fasaki 
in Ian McIntosh's first test in, in Kings Park. I think I think you were the two new caps. There weren't there weren't any other new caps. That correct. Game, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, correct. And then we also drew. You're right. Yeah. And um, what was that? Tell us a little bit about your experience of of. Okay, so you finally got your chance. You missed out the previous year because of injury. So you finally got your chance to play for the Springboks and, and also playing against a guy and Rudy Fasaki who who must have been well into his thirties by that stage. Yeah, but also I, I think you know. I think that you're, there's a very few people, very few players that it has blinding games and everything is perfect. And since the, you get up in the morning, it's just because the pressure is so incredible. You know, you, you, you so desperately want to justify your, 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 your selection. You want to do well. You know the history of the jersey. And, and, and uh, 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 you know, you always hear ex Primox say that every game you play for South Africa or for your country, for that matter, is a blessing. It's a privilege. It's never a right. And one should always leave that jersey in a better position, in a better situation than the, all the previous guys that were privileged to wear that jersey. And I know some people say, yeah, it sounds emotional. Because it is emotional. I mean, it's, it's massive. It's the cherry on the cake. Um, there's so many people, millions of people around the world that would like and would love to represent their country at whatever level. Some might never get the, the opportunity. And when you get the opportunity, you must make absolutely the best of it. That's how I felt, you know. And I was obviously exceptionally proud. Um, and, and a great moment. Um, well, it didn't last long because I, I was dropped after the game, and 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 I was told uh, because uh, I was the victim of the draw, you know. But whatever. I mean, that's part of learning. Uh, that's part of, of the learning curve. And, and I just had to fight harder to come back. Did you go on the Did you go on the, on the Australian tour that followed? Yes, I did. Okay, because in, in retrospect, I mean, I know Ian Mack got a lot of flack when he came back from that tour because South Africa had lost. But you were playing the World Championships away from home, playing them in, 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 in Australia. If I remember correctly, Nick Far Jones had come back from retirement to lead them or there was, some, there was that angle as well. So they wanted to beat you because they were the reigning World Cup champions. And everybody, of course, was saying, well, you never played against South Africa to win. Um, yeah, yeah, and, but and we went very close in that tour because of Bushy, you, meant, well, you mentioned James Small. If he hadn't been sent off, I think it was in the second test, we could well have won that series. I, I absolutely agree with you, Gav. I think you must also remember, you know, how, how long we've been out in isolation, uh, sport isolation. You know, you, 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 you stay sharp, you keep up to date with training methods, uh, techniques, uh, all these kind of things by competing, by constantly competing against the best. That, that sharpens your tools, that keeps you on your toes. To be out that long, we fell behind. It's a fact. It's a logical thing. So we did actually quite well in that short space of time to perform that well. And you did write about it. We, we very well could have won that test series. And, and then the following, year, okay, the following year, you had to go home early, if I remember correctly, when you went to New Zealand. I remember... Unfor un unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, uh, no disrespect. I love New Zealand. I love the people in New Zealand. I've always had, only had great times there. I've got great respect for the Kiwis because I think they are very much like us. They are very passionate about things in life. And that's why I respect them. That's why that love-hate relationship has always been and will be uh, uh, between us. But, you know, uh, no disrespect to a little town called Invercargill. Um, I've always said that if you have to give... The, 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 the beautiful place called Earth and Enema, you would stick it right into Invercargill because it is a rattle. There's no doubt about it. Um, it was, it's always raining there. It's way down in the south. You guys know it's always cold there and it's always cold there as well and all these kind of things. But anyway, so unfortunately, I tore my medial ligaments in that game against, uh, against uh, um, Southland. Uh, against Southland. And, and unfortunately, that was the end of my tour and out again, you know, for for uh, five months with an injury, untimely. Was there an issue at, 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 in your early career? I seem to recall, I mean, that there was always coaches who sort of felt that you could, that could, you, could you, you were good for one thing and not, and not others. Am I right in saying that? Because um, you got, you, you sort of like got pigeonholed as a, as a sort of, you, you said number two lock. I suppose I've, I've heard some people say number, you're obviously wearing the number four and then the number five. Um, what, what, what was, cause, cause you didn't play again under Mac, did you after that first test against France? Am I right no, in saying that? Um, on tour, yes, on that tour in New Zealand, but not in the test side. Not in the test side, okay, no. okay, okay. Um, but was there, was there sort of perception at the time and maybe that, um, is it, was it your line out work that, that, that they wanted you to improve? I'm trying to remember. Um, if there was something that was holding I, I'm not back. sure, but there was this other coach who, who coached the Springboks, uh, John Williams. Um, oh, yes, this one, yeah. 
yeah, um, who who was after Quintus van Rooyen, the 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 famous or Quintus van Bloen, the one-eyed uh, reporter. Uh, he was even more one-eyed. I mean, uh, John Williams went as far as picking people out of B teams ahead of other provinces people, and I, I say it to his face today. I think he was a I think he was a a very below par coach himself. So uh, if that made him feel better, no problem. Okay, so I started, I started off with, well, okay, I'd probably just start off with John Williams. That's probably why I didn't choose you for that first tour. Um, I, I, we, I, I was going to ask you about a, a game that you played and that, that I remember very well, because you guys often like had a reputation for, for being you know, very aggressive and, and very physical. But there were times when I thought that teams came for you, like to almost like play on that. And one of them was the night that you played against a Welsh team called Neath in the mill. And I always remember that game as, as one of the, I mean, everybody talks about Tucuman. I wasn't in Argentina, but I was in Wales for that game. Um, do you remember that game? I mean, it was, I, I remember seeing you after that game and you were seething. Um, and the, the Welsh really seemed to go out to sort of bait you that night. It, it, without doubt. And, and it, it's, I mean, I'm not crying over spilled milk, Gabe. You, like you said, you were there yourself. You could very much yeah. differ from me if you want, but it was clear from day one. Um, they were they were coming out uh, to beat us. They would they wanted to be the. Uh, I'm I'm under correction, but uh, was that just after the Swansea game or or it was just we, like, we 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 gave the Swansea after or just before it. It was other after. Yeah, yeah. Before. Because yeah. everybody said uh, the the uh, Swansea was at that stage the Welsh champions. Uh, they were a star-studded team, but on that day we just clicked uh, in Swansea on that beautiful cricket field. As you remember, where the famous Sir Garfield so was he that world record score. But we gave them 70 points that day, which killed them. I mean, it was, they were like nowhere on the day. And, and I think that's why also the, the provincial sides or the club sides uh, in, 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 in Wales, that's they said, well, you know, they're all going for the scalp of the Springboks. They need to beat us. Um, and it was, it was a hell of a niggly game, as you rightfully say. It was in every scrum and every ruck. The Oaks were, were really, really trying to get under our skin. Um, and it was, I, I'm to this day, I, I think nobody was sent off Gab, am I right? Which to this day, I think it was, was. The biggest miracle, yeah. it was one of the biggest miracles I've ever witnessed. That nobody could have been sent off in one of the most brutal games I've ever been involved in. And that was even the, I remember, I think it was Tian Strauss. It was one of the, was the fastest I've ever seen Tian run. He, he ran, I think, the length of the field to get involved in the fight at one stage. Well, I, I considered after that game, you know, looking at uh, back at that game and the footwork and the hand speed of Tian Strauss, he could might as well have been a toss-up between rugby and boxing for him. <laughs> I remember Tian getting involved in that. He ran, 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 ran right across the field. And as you say... And, I mean, so, and, 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 don't, and don't forget about Keith Andrews. He was like all over the park. <laughs> <laughs> Keith used to love that. 